Hi friends, Mindy here. I have a process video for you today. I am going to be covering the journal that I'm gonna to create to work through Identified from By the Well for God. I am using some of the fabric that they released with this kit and just a little um, cardboard box here that is from my recycling that I am going to create my cover out of. I've done this multiple times on my channel, um, but I just, I thought it would be fun to work in a journal like this this month, kind of, um, just, I have a lot of notes that I know I'm going to want to put in here, and so I needed a journal that had a nice big spine. This one's going to be about two inches. Um, so what I'm doing here is just trimming off the excess um, from down at the bottom and the edges, and then I'm going to measure this to be about six and a half inches tall is going to end up being my um, my finished height, I think that's right. And um, so I'm just trimming off these little tabs down here at the bottom and then um, I will measure and um, this to about, like I said, about six and a half inches. And I am, it's worth noting here, I am using a, a Tim Holtz ruler, but because this has a steel edge on it, um, and that's the side I'm using because I'm using that um, X-Acto knife. You could certainly use your trimmer if you wanted to. Um, and then I am working on top of a nonstick or not a nonstick, a self-healing um, mat. So I don't have to worry about cutting my mat or anything. So again, you can see I just um, drew that line on there and now I'm just gonna use my ruler and line that up and trim this box down so that I have it to the size that I want. So once that is finished, we're good to go. I like using boxes like this because it just takes out, you know, you don't have to worry about having the two pieces and the spine and all that. It just, it's already all together. So I, like I said, I'm going to be using the fabrics that released with the kit. I'm using two of them um, for the cover. So um, the other thing that I'm using here is a product called um, Heat and Bond. This is a fabric adhesive basically. So I'm just trimming this down um, to the size of my my um, fabric which is like 10 by 12 I cut out two of these I'm going to use both fabrics and um, you just iron this on so I have a little craft iron here just for a couple seconds I'm going to go over each of the sections and just iron this adhesive on here you can kind of see I'm working on a paper bag now because I want that extra glue to go onto the paper bag. Typically you would cut your um, heat and bond a little bit smaller than your fabric so that you wouldn't have this problem, but I wanted to make sure that I had all of the fabric available to use. So um, I am having to work on a paper bag. It's good to cover your surface anyway, just in case. Um, and I did that for both pieces of fabric. And now this teal one, I am marking kind of the center. I'm just gonna trim this down with my scissors here. Um, I'm not worried about a super straight edge here because this is gonna get covered up by the other fabric part of it. So I'm just kind of lining this up now with my cover. And um, on the inside, you can kind of see when I flip it around, this is the same way that I would cover um, a journal if I was covering it in paper or um, one of the little pocket Bibles. But there's quite a bit of fabric um, here. I want to make sure that I'm leaving enough that it's easy to iron down, um, but I, I do want to trim it down just a little bit. And I will save those fabric scraps and use them throughout this journal as well. Um, so it's not gone to waste. Um, and then I'm um, just kind of lining this up. And then just to make this part easier, I'm just gonna iron this kind of center of the cover just for a couple seconds. And that's gonna make this next part easier so it's not slipping around. So I'm just gonna um, cut out these corners here just like I would any other cover that I was um, covering if it was paper or whatever. And then I'm just gonna take um, this craft iron, it just, it only takes a couple seconds. You just kind of rub it along there and then it adheres down. And then um, with that same process, doing the top and the bottom, and then um, I'll do the long side at the end. <clears throat> Excuse me. I still fighting being a little bit sick so sorry about that but um anyway so I'm just ironing this down here and then I will go back to the front side and now just finish ironing the rest of this cover down um that just makes sure that it's kind of stays in place and doesn't wiggle around it just makes it a little bit easier um and then I'm going to do the same thing to the back cover same exact process I'm going to trim it down a little bit iron it whole nine yards. And then I'm gonna use this other piece to now cover the spine. I'm just trying to eye 
how much of this fabric I want. Now, I technically, I didn't need to put the heat and bond on this whole entire piece of fabric, um, but I wasn't sure how much I wanted to use. So I went ahead and just did that. And like I said, I can still use this fabric throughout my, my journal for things. And then I'm just using a rotary cutter here and that same steel edged um, ruler to kind of trim this down. Um, th because this part I do want to be really straight because it's going to be the finished edge on my cover. So um, I'm lining this up and then I'm going to do that same thing uh, again here, just trimming down some of it so it's not quite as tall and um, flipping it to the inside. I just want to make sure that everything is, is even from the front to the back. And I'm going to use my iron here just for a couple seconds again, just to hold this in place. And then I'm going to work on the inside. So what I want to do is cut out a little bit of the fabric where it's going to fold, um, like with where the cover folds so i'm just cutting out a couple little v shapes here again this is just like what i would do if i was covering any other journal essentially and then I'm just going to iron down these three pieces and that inside is all going to get covered up by some paper so i'm not worried about how that looks so my main reason for doing that was just to cut out some of the bulk that um, happens right there at the seam, the fold there. Um, it'll just make it fold easier. And since I'm going to be adding some paper layers as well, I didn't want to have too much in there. So I decided to cover the inside with um, some of the paper from the kit. You could certainly use more fabric if you wanted to. These are the two papers that I decided to use. I have already cut them down to size and covered the backs of them with double-sided adhesive. I have the scrapbook.com version. Uh, Score Tape is another brand that you could use. Um, it's just really super, super sticky um, double-sided adhesive. So I um, am starting with just removing one of the piece, the backer papers, and I'm gonna line it up with this line that I drew down the center of the spine because my two pages are gonna like go right up next to each other and that's just gonna cover this entire um, journal. So it just worked out perfectly with the size that way. So I went ahead and removed the other two pieces of the backer paper and now I'm just using my bone folder here on that fold just to work that paper just a little bit. I don't want it to crack. So um, doing that just kind of helps helps you work it on there. And then I did the same thing with this other piece. So now it looks like just one continuous piece of pattern paper along there. Um, and again, using that bone folder on the cover just to make sure that I, I get a good fold and even going over the outside of it just, just to work that paper. And um, it's going to stay uh, folded really well. And so I created a template to do the holes for my signatures. So what I did is I took a piece of paper that was the same height as my signatures, which is six inches tall and the same width of my um, spine, which is two inches. And I measured all this out. Um, you could eyeball this certainly if you wanted to. Um, and if I'm using just like one, um, one signature, I don't really worry about it, but since I'm doing five here, I wanted to make sure that they at least looked pretty decent. So I created that grid and then I poked the holes using that template into the spine. And then I had to widen them just a little bit. And so now I have my signature. So what I'm using is I have uh, five pieces of Bristol Vellum Smooth, um, like it's almost like mixed media paper. And then I have, I chose five of the By the Well for God papers that I could kind of turn sideways. They're the six by eights. And I folded those in half. And then I have five of the little mini file folders that were released as well. And so those are gonna make up my signatures. I have one each. And I just went through and kind of placed them in different order and different orientation. And then um, now I just wanna keep them in, um, in order from this point forward. So um, one of the things that to note is because I'm using these file folders and they're not the same height, I want to make sure that those file folders are going to hit at least two of those holes. So I want to make sure that when I'm putting them in the signature that they're going to get like at least two holes punched in there so that way they will stay in place. So I am going through now and I'm going to punch all the holes in the signatures. So I'm just using my template and I, what I do is I fold it along those lines that I created. Um, and this is actually easier to do than it sounds because it's got the holes already poked in it. So you can fold it right along there. And then I'm just lining each one of those up working from front to back. Um, so then I'll fold it like on the second line and then on the third line and go through and punch those holes. Um, 
in exactly the same place and these are going to line up with the holes that are already punched in the cover and just the only thing with this is just make sure that you're keeping your signatures in the same order so i'm getting ready to sew this in so i'm using um a wax linen thread i happen to have an orange color um you need about three lengths of um the height of your signature so i cut all those already and I'll give you a little bit extra, but it's easier to work with that way. So I threaded my book binding needle and now I'm going through, I'm going to use a three hole pamphlet stitch for this. I've done this on my channel a bunch. If you've seen my other videos, um, and I'm sorry, this first one is a little bit fiddly. I keep pulling it off of camera, but, um, so you start from the inside and go to the outside and then from the outside, you come up to the top and come back in. And then once you're on the inside, you go all the way down to the bottom hole and back out. And I don't know why I was having such trouble. I was, it was very, very fiddly <laughs> this part. Anyway, you go back out to the outside and then from once you're on the outside, you come back in through that middle hole and just be careful not to split your threads because then you won't be able to make it a tight knot when you do that. So, um, once you're back on the inside, you want to make sure that each one of the tails, um, is on either side of that long piece that's running down the middle. And then you just tie a square knot around it and you could tie a bow if you wanted to or whatever i just tie the knot first um, to make sure that it's really secure and i'm going to leave those strings hanging for now so um, for some reason that one was very fiddly i did the other ones off camera and they went super smooth and then i turned my camera back on to record this last one and i it's fiddly again so i apologize um i again for me when i'm doing multiple signatures i always start sewing them from the back to the front i don't know why but i just find that a little bit easier to do um, so again, with that same pamphlet stitch, you start in the center hole and go out to the outside and then you come to the top hole and then you, from the inside, you go all the way down to the bottom hole and back out to the outside. And then, um, from the outside, you go back in to the center and then tie that knot. And there are a lot of tutorials on, um, the three hole pamphlet stitch. I've done it a bunch on my channel. So, um, this is probably not the best tutorial for that. If, if, um, if it doesn't make sense, leave me a comment. I can maybe do another video. It's really super simple, um, stitch to do. It's very sturdy. It works very well. It always keeps my, um, my journals held together really easily. Um, so it's by far probably the the most used stitch that I do when I'm sewing in signatures. But um, now that they're all in, this is kind of the way that they look. Each signature is just a little bit different because all of those papers are in different order. Um, and then eventually I'll probably put a closer, closure on it, but I'll probably wait till the end to see um, kind of what I need for that. So if you liked this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, bye.